Hello guys and gals, welcome back. This is part two of Tuning Kicks, the when and the why. So if you watched part one, you should be aware of the different types of kicks and which ones can and can't be tuned. If not, I thoroughly suggest a quick watch of that previous video. I also suggest you have a decent listening environment, be it headphones or speakers, because we're going to go into some real world examples today. And you need to be able to hear those lows. This one's going to be a bit long form, so let's get going. Okay, so we've got some tracks lined up here. I've ordered them roughly in kind of toughness. As we mentioned last week, tougher genres tend to lend themselves to droner kicks or pitched and tuned kicks. And some don't have bass, so the kick is the bass. And another thing they don't have is chords usually, or moving chords, which makes them on the one, what we call on the one. Meaning they stay on note one of the key, or the home note, if you will, what in musical terms we call the tonic. And as you'd imagine, that makes them more suitable for tuning a kick to that one note. So first off, we've got a techno track here in the style of Joey Beltram, the OG. Now, this is what I'd call a techno rumbler. There's no really discernible bass line, it's just kind of rumbling down there. Let me solo what's happening down there. Now, I have made this with a bass and a kick, but the purpose is to act as a droner kick, tuned to the one of the track key. Here's our rumble. It's just a sine wave tuned to the key and uh, some filtered noise. And here's the kick. As you can hear, that's actually a diver kick. Almost no pitch to that, really. Uh, obviously, I've chose that because it matches the toughness of the track I'm trying to make. So that's always going to be the first guiding principle for me. Does it work aesthetically? So Techno Rumbler, as you can see, very much suitable for the Drona pitched kick vibes. As is the next track here in a different way. Uh, this track's called Energy Crisis. As you can see, another type of techno there. Not a rumbler this time. This one's just got a hard kick. It's distorted, which really helps bring out the pitch. Here's what's going on underneath. Huge kick. Again, a combination of bass and kick. I probably couldn't find one in the correct key, but this is a droner. just using the bass to extend the kick into its pitched state. So two classic cases for tuned kicks there. Now the next track is near a bass house, but it's still quite tough. But this one has a bass part and I want you to listen out for what that bass is doing. <laughs> And here's what's going on underneath. So as you can hear, the bass part is all over the place in a good way. In fact, I call this more of a bass line than a bass part. This is, it's basically playing a melody. Thank you. 
Now, because we've got all that movement, that dictates what kind of kick I'm going to choose, which is this. So it's a tough track, but I've used a diver, a short one. So the reason I choose a short diver kick there instead of one that can be pitched is because any kick with discernible pitch would inevitably clash with that bass line that's moving around. We've got lots of long bass notes. We've got no room for other long bass notes, so we keep it short. And that's going to save you a lot of work at the mix stage, getting a clean, powerful bottom end. Okay, moving on, let's look at some tech house. I suppose you class that one as Fisher style tech. Uh, you might recognize that one from the Do You Need Chords video. Spoiler alert, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, what's going on underneath is this. Here is the bass. Again, kind of on the move, and our kick is... Same story, we've got a short diver, so it doesn't get in the way of our constant moving bass part. The next track, I call this Roller Tech, like Eli Brown kind of style. You can hear that rolling, motoring bass part there. That's why I call it a roller. Now it's mostly on the one, but it is very active. Let me show you what's going on down there. Here's the bass. And the sub. Here's the kick I went with. There is a tail there. You could call this kick a hybrid. And because the bass isn't moving a lot in pitch and it's centered around the one, we've got away with a longer kick there. This track could have either type of kick, to be honest. It could easily have a long droner pitched kick on the one, but then I just wouldn't use the separate sub bass octave. Hope that makes sense. Okay, the next one's a little bit more laid back. Uh, I was going for a kind of hybrid of Camel Fat and Dennis Ferreira. Uh, it sounds like this. I'm down Here is what's going on down at the bottom. And the kick is this. So this one's a diver. We've got a sub. And what I call a bow bass. Bow. <laughs> bow. 
Now, you could definitely argue that there is room for a longer tuned kick here, but there's two reasons I've chosen the short one. The sub is playing the same as a tom part. It's called the dembo rhythm. And that grooves better when there's some space. But also, later on in the track, we move chords. Listen. <laughs> Did you hear the bass move down? It's here. So because that bass moved down, I couldn't have picked a tuned kick on the one anyway, because it would have just clashed and we would have lost the movement, which is responsible for that big emotional release when the chords finally change on the, the last drop. Okay, next, you should recognize which track inspired this one. I think the name Strange New World gives it away. And here's the bottom end. So long bow bass, changing notes. And for that reason, it's a short one, Diver. Now the tom is tuned to the one, but it's in the octave above the bass, so they don't clash. Okay, next up is a track called Constellation. This was my tribute to a 90s classic. You might know the one. The first drop goes like this. Fair bit in common with the roller tech we had earlier, actually. Here is the kick and bass. Rolling bass line. That does have a little bit of pitch to it. It's a hybrid, that one but it's not in tune with the key of the track and that's on purpose because just like our track earlier we are moving chords on the second drop same story the bass is moving around the chords are moving around so i've picked a kick that doesn't interfere with what the bass is going to be doing here's a second drop with the chord move <laughs> Hope you can hear that. Next up, we've got a Deep House example now. So as you can hopefully hear, the bass is on the move. And that means...
Diver, short, kick. Did you guess right? Because <laughs> the bass is moving around, any tuned kick would just mess that right up. Okay, so all of those examples have been four on the floor, but I wanted to show you the principle still stands in genres that don't. So here's a breaks track. It's got a Reese bass in it. And here is what's going on underneath. Very long bass notes. Diver kick. Well, actually, maybe hybrid. But again, not tuned to the key of the track because our chords are on the move and our bass is on the move with them. So no droner, because our bass is a droner. Two droners would be, well, really droney. Anyway, moving on, next track is Garage, UK Garage. It's called Don't Wait. Or donkey, as I like to call it. <laughs> we play the part with the bass. This is interesting. Let me show you what's going on here. This is a kick. I class that as a droner. It's definitely got a pitch to it. Mm. Now here's a quick tip. If you're struggling to hear the pitch of a kick drum, try putting it up the octave, uh, plus 12. Sometimes makes it easier to hear the note in there. Anyway, here's our bass, organ bass. The bass is much higher than the kick. But the reason there's a drone kick in here is just that guiding principle I said earlier, aesthetics matches the toughness of the track and it's tuned a bit off on purpose to add to that toughness. It's very much the done thing in certain types of UK garage. And because the organ bass is quite high anyway, we don't really get any low end problems. And last but not least, we've got a pop track. Don't Call Me featuring Tasia Sky. Let me show you the low end. And here is the bass. As you can hear, a lot of movement. So here's the kick. Surprise, surprise, we've got the short, untuned diver. So I think the takeaway lesson here is, with me being a classically trained musician originally, with almost perfect relative pitch, you'd have thought I'd be rather fastidious about tuning kicks. And as you can see from the examples, it's rarely the case, but that's because obviously I understand the principles. So hopefully I've passed those principles on to you. And uh, if you did learn anything, show me some love in the comments or leave us a like, or even leave us a sub. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to make a video on anything you're struggling with. Let me know. Until next time, I hope you have a smoother time with those kicks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.